On today's episode of Gathering the Kings. I had a deal that was going to fall apart and he like pulled it through. He did the impossible. So I went on his Facebook page. I found out that you know, he was into golf and I bought a $450 golf bag and then got like $300 of golf balls and had them all personalized with like deal clothes or something. When people deliver or if you want to get into somebody's attention, yeah. find out what they're into, do something thoughtful, put some money into it and reach out and make yourself vulnerable. What's up, everybody? I'm Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. Today, I've got Jack Petrick on the King stage, man. My brother, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. You know, I almost felt like I was in like an MMA scenario there for a second. We were kind of getting fired up a, a few minutes ago off stage. And so here I am like introducing you like we're going to fight or something. <laughs> That's awesome. What kind of business do you have, Jack? Oh, I've got a few different, but the main thing I do is real estate. So I started off many years ago as a firefighter paramedic, read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, got extremely inspired, knew nothing about house building, construction, management, rentals, Right. went on eBay, and more specifically Amazon. I purchased every book, how to build a house, how to be a GC, how to wire a house, how to like what? run the whole thing. So uh, basically, you know, I, I came from a point where, you know, just had a high school education, but I had a lot, a lot of drive, initiative, and determination, persistence, and resourcefulness. Okay. But I just didn't have the direction where to aim that at. But once I came across that book, it was like the light bulb went off. So I became interested in real estate. I started building custom homes. I did that up until 2008 when the market blew up with all the mortgage meltdowns. Yeah. So at that point, I was still a fireman. I was looking for where's the opportunity at. And at the time, it was in buying distressed single family houses. So in my market, which is Cleveland, Ohio, we were buying houses initially at $60,000, which is half of what they used to be. They used to be 120. I'm like, great, you know, we're buying them at a 50% discount. And the market just fell out to where we're buying them at $4,000 a house. So cool. we spent like 13 years just buying these houses up. They were destroyed, as you can imagine. Yeah. We would fully rebuild them, rent them out. We'd have very minimal maintenance calls or requests. We had the nicest place to block. We had equity. So it made sense. Yeah. So I did for about 13 years, got intrigued with multifamily apartments, uh, transition, spent about a year learning about that. Again, books, courses, events, paid for some one-on-one -one mentoring. Really got geared up for that. I left the fire department at 15 years, which is, it's pretty wow. rare that that happens. Most people. That, yeah, big deal. They'll go career there. And it's a great career. But, you know, I just, somebody said in a mastermind, Josh Cantwell, a buddy of mine, a mentor of mine, he said, we think of our job as it's a life jacket when it's really an anchor around our neck holding us back. Interesting. So, you know, I just, I, I thought about it more and I didn't want to be at a typical retirement age, look back and have the regret of what would life look like if I would have done it. And I didn't want that regret. So when I left the fire department, I left my pension, healthcare, and I was 10 years too old to ever get rehired. So I literally burned the boat. Burned it all the way. Yes, yes. And then jumped into another mastermind, which was, again, I lost my income. And I jumped into a mastermind, which was half of the income I made as a fireman. So it was like another, you know, pretty big step. I got around a lot more people with bigger mindsets, bigger ideas, thoughts, totally. taking bigger action. And then built up into that four-year period, about a 700-unit multifamily apartment portfolio. And then about a year and a half ago, I, I reconnected two partners that I have down in Florida. And we're building homes down in Florida right now as well. So I've got 50 homes under construction. And then wow. we have another 50 homes that we're pressed getting permitting. So real estate is my main thing. I do yeah. have another business with my wife. And then I got some other things going on. But real estate is, is the foundation core piece of what I do. Well, first off, I love real estate. We've talked about that on the show many times. <clears throat> I love the creativity inside of real estate because when you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you started building homes. When yes. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I did not start building homes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the power of, of the creativity of business and, of course, real estate. Like We can read the same book, get the same success principle, and then go apply it in completely different ways. It literally is the backbone of gathering the kings because even whether it's the podcast interviewing lots of different people or even in the mastermind groups, it's like, man, we're all in different industries. But the sure. reality of it is, is there's a lot of similarities. It's the same success principles. It's the same struggles. And uh, when we can get together, talk about them like we are here today, we bring light to those situations, solutions, you know, the whole deal. I love it. 
Okay, so we've got a lot to talk about since you've got a lot going on, but I'm going to try to guide us through a little bit of a story here. And you, you gave us a little bit of kind of how it happened. But what I want to know is, like, you actually, in, in the fire department, fire firefighting world, there's a lot of people who will stick with that and then do the side jobs. I've got current friends that do that. Sure. What for you clicked where it's like, I have to burn the bridge or I have to move on. And I'll kind of take that as like the beginning for you. Like when you just like did it, what was that? The biggest thing was changing the people that are around the audience of people. You know, yeah. you know, there's that famous saying that you're, you know, look at the four people around you and that's who you're going to become. And I had to change my influence and circle because the people that I grew up with that I'm friends with them, you know, a lot of the guys in the fire department and elsewhere, they're just influences there's a lot of people that just want to hold us back. Maybe not intentionally. Maybe they're just, yeah. you know, they're just wired that all they see is the negativity or all they see is fair, or they know of their friends, aunts, uncles, third boyfriend that had a property, lost money, like what the story is. But yeah. it's like, it just really became as they started connecting with other people and, and a lot of personal development. So I was involved in an MLM company. We never made a nickel with it, but what I did make with it, was a lot of mindset shifts and, and a lot of books and a lot of personal development. And so totally. all of that was just various, various puzzle pieces that kept them getting put together and kept them redefining me. Because when I, I grew up very blue collar, the version of me 10 years ago is not the version of me today. And there's still a lot for me to improve. But I used yeah. to have like the gas app on my phone and trying to find the cheapest gas. And like there was a lot of development that had to go as far as changing what my limitations were. You know, we all have this box we put around ourselves and I can't do that or I can't earn that or I can't be that. It, it's a bunch of garbage. Like with the opportunities that we have here, we don't even realize. I, I was just sharing before, I went to El Salvador with my daughter, um, you know, just seeing where people come from a true third world country. They have no resources, no money, no education. They have rocks holding down the roof. Like most of the world lives like that. We are in an environment that we literally can do whatever we want, but our mindsets prevent us from going to the next level. Yeah, it's so true. And we hear it. Like, it's not like the listener today is hearing you say this for the first time, right? They're hearing you say it for the first time, but they haven't heard it for the first time. Sure. So what's the gap between hearing it and hearing it? I think the gap is just finally believing in it with yourself that you're capable of doing it. And for all of us, that takes a different amount of time. Yeah. It's, it's some of us, the pressure allows us to, to, to take that next step. Sometimes it's more of a nurturing effect. It's all going to be differently for us. And, you know, I didn't even realize it, that I needed that. It just really was connecting well with the right people and people that are doing bigger. And I just, I feel like a lot of that came from going to masterminds, going to events and, and paying for it because the reality of it is you're going to pay for it one way or another. The yeah. first many years I did everything self-taught, reading books and plowing my path. And that's how it started. But I didn't realize about the mentorship side. And, you know, I'm not selling any mentorship, but I'm just, if I had to look back and change things, if I would have taken that mentorship earlier, and have that person to be next side by side with me and, and provide the path and that reassurance, I would have got there a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah. I think once you know what the path looks like, if you will, then you know how long it took you. And if you can help somebody understand before they have to go figure it out themselves, then, then their path just becomes literally to the same exact marker. It becomes so much less. And the difficulty or the gap there, since we're talking about gaps, even in my own perspective, is the willingness to listen or the willingness to go, I value that enough to where I'm just going to, I'm just going to go do it and not question things because I question everything. And that's been great, but it's also been, man, if I had just not been so stubborn, <laughs> if I had just, just, just go do it champ, you know, I probably, even, even after I had the recognition that you do, that mentorship is good. It took me a long time myself to say, I've had the same acknowledgement that you just described. But even when I had the acknowledgement, I was still trying to pick it apart. And sure. goodness gracious, you know, um, we're not doing anything that somebody else hasn't done before. Right. You know, so what, once we we can tag on to a person, find somebody successful, and just copy what they do and take action, it changes everything. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, so tell me about what was the difficulty. So I want you to go back. So you kind of told us how you got started. You burned the bridge. You want to be around a different layer of people. That's why you left the fire station, you know, the whole deal. 
but now you're in business and you're kind of making things work and it's, you know, you're in the home building section. And before 2008, you're probably experiencing some, some wins and losses. What was the struggle of that time? Like the biggest, like put your stamp on it. This was the hardest thing from zero to a million, let's say. The hardest struggle, it's, it, that, that's a real hard one because there's been so many struggles, challenges, explosion, losing key people, you know, having to raise millions of dollars or close in a deal. You don't think there's any way that can happen. Right. But I got to see like every time we've been through those massive stressful events, it's created and kind of raised me up to the next level. What I mean by that is when I experience a similar stressor event on the next time, it's not nearly as stressful because you start to gain the confidence. You've right. been there, you've done that. Things blew up, worst case scenario, and you were able to get through it. So many times I feel that it's just fear that stops us and prevents us because the fear of the unknown, the what if, the worst case scenario. But in reality, rarely is it ever worst case scenario. And every time, no matter how bad it is, we've been able to get through it. So yeah. I, I think that's really been the biggest piece of just getting going through those experiences, getting your head squeezed in a rice. And just having the confidence that you can get to the next event. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously that's a lot of mindset there, uh, persistence, kind of just like a no quit, just figure it out. I love, I wrote this down actually, the stressor event. I'm actually right after this show, I'm doing a, a connection call with the folks inside of Gathering the Kings Mastermind. And, and we we're going to talk about uh, a similar deal, but I'm going to use this language actually. And I'll let them know your name and, and they can reach awesome. out to you. But, but the reality of it is, is that we go through these, what you're saying, stressor events. And I had one last week. And where on top of all these things that are normally happening, what should have gone really smooth and this, this, this didn't. And because of that, I had to then put another level of intensity onto it. And so now I think differently. Could I have thought the way that I think now last week before it? Yes. In fact, it's not like this revolutionary, like, oh my goodness, I had never thought about that before. But now I know that I have to think like this or that it's like, the old way can't even be an option anymore because I need to eliminate what just happened, right? Sure, sure. And it's like almost changing your vocabulary. I can't, how can I? Is that forces you find solutions? Well, here's just a, a more specific example that happened to me. So when I was transitioning into the multifamily space, I, I lost a prior apartment. I had a, a number of single family homes. I was taking out small apartment buildings. And then I finally was able to enter into a relationship with a broker and we were able to build trust. And that trust and relationship allowed me to get more deal flow because people want to do business with people they like and trust. Yeah. So we were able to get a smaller apartment, like a 36 year on a contract. And that was, I had to raise like 500 grand for that. So whatever, it wasn't that big of a deal. But now that relationship opened up another deal. Now I needed 2 million. Next one was a million. Next one was 500 grand. Next one was 1.5. And everything hit at the same time, the same summer. And it was a massive stressful event. But that was just an yeah. example that that was a time that my head got put into a vice. And I will never forget that period of how yeah. stressful it was. Because if I didn't produce, you know, there was a quarter million dollars of earnest money that was going to get lost. And my yeah. reputation and the deals and the cash flow and the equity. Yeah. So you know, just, that's just a specific example as to yeah. one of those events. hundred percent. So I, I want you to take me to a specific decision, a good decision that you made along the way, particularly in that time frame, that zero to a million mark. Cause that's where the listener is something that you did that you can look back on and go, boom, I'm glad I did that. I'll do it again. Yeah. There, there'd be a number of them, but I, I think the biggest one I would go back to is, is mentoring Whether that be masterminds. It really involves you having to take money out of your pocket and pay it to somebody you know, podcasts are amazing. Webinars, books are all amazing. But when you put money into something and you have skin in the game, it results in you leveling up to the next level because you've invested money. And it's like the biggest investment we can make really are in ourselves. So many people, I feel like they take a path where they quit at high school or they quit at college. But our education, like you got to find out where your passion is and continue on that path and persistently push on it. And when you do, it's just amazing the opportunities that open up, open up after that. Yeah, no, you're hundred percent right. It's the, you know, money where your mouth is type of a phrase, but you're right. When, when you, when you commit to that thing, whatever that is, and you put your money there, it draws out this, this next level because it, it's in there. Sure. It's in there. It's the same thing of, you know, it makes me think of a video I did like, I don't know, December time frame. Actually, no, it was November. That's what it was. And the video, 
is on the same mindset, but it was like in November, you're waiting for January one to go, you know, sign up with your gym and get you a trainer and all that fun stuff. Cause you're waiting for January one. And I'm like, if it's really that th- go, go right now, sure. pay double actually sure. tell him, ask him what his fee is, pay him double ahead as a tip. And then tell me, you're not going to show up and change whatever it is that you're trying to change, gain weight, lose weight, whatever, you know, that's how we vote with our wallet. Exactly. Okay. Flip the coin here. Tell me about a, a bad choice. Tell me something that was disastrous. I would have to say it, it would be going back to more of my beginning years. In the very beginning, I had a very, very much a poverty mindset. I wasn't going to pay for that mentoring. I was always looking to find the cheapest route possible. So for example, when I started rehabbing rental properties, the, the goal was to be as cheap as possible in those rehabs. And that always looked in my face. Right. You know, skilled labor isn't cheap and cheap labor isn't skilled, for example. Amen. You know, <laughs> the, the cheap path and trying to take C players and create B players out of them. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't. And with, for an A product. Exactly. Like when you hire an A player, you're going to pay A wages or A compensation, whatever you want to look at that. Yep. But that person is going to create revenue. They're going to drive sales, whatever your business, your industry is. When you find those right people and they're compensated accordingly to motivate them, they're not a cost or an expense. They're an asset to your business and to your organization. Right. And when, when I've hired so many of the wrong people for the years, it's not the revenue that we lost in that moment. It's the momentum we lost. It's the deal flow. It's the equity. There, there's so much more that gets lost than what that amount is. And then when we started transitioning, looking at bringing people on more A players and pay, paying accordingly, that's something that was a, a, a mindset block for me and sometimes other people. Let's just take the salary of $100,000 know, whatever your industry is. Yeah, You're not paying that person $100,000. You're paying them X amount of dollars per week. And if they don't deliver, you're not going to be paying them for a year. You may pay them for weeks or months before you have to make a transition. Right. And then you know, I, as well as others, are like, yeah, this isn't working. We hired this person. But you know, that transition from doing everything yourself to growing, there's going to be a lot of growing pains, a lot of bad relationships. But the way that I look at it too, it's like I've had some personal relationships that donated on me. I didn't stop dating women because of that. I persisted right. and then it finally worked out. So it's yeah. the same thing with business. So good. So simple, but so good. Hey, Chaz Wolf here. As many of you know, I have been on an absolute mission to help entrepreneurs from all across the country in many different industries level up their game and grow their business and intentionally connect with other entrepreneurs. We do that obviously through the podcast, but we also have a peer-to-peer mastermind group specifically for seven to nine figure business owners. We are bringing some of the best and most successful entrepreneurs and minds together in a regular and super intentional way to not only grow our network, but to be able to leverage. And at a certain point in business, Success becomes about leverage, leveraging time, leveraging resources, leveraging key relationships. This is exactly what we're doing inside of the peer-to-peer mastermind group called Gathering the Kings, specifically for seven- to nine-figure business owners. So if that's you, if you're ready to level up your seven- to nine-figure business even to the next level and get around other big hitters just like you, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com, fill out a short application, and uh, it'll come to an application uh, call with me. And I want to chat with you to see if it might be a good fit. Talk soon. All the things that you're sharing, you've even given some exact examples. Were these like epiphanies? Were these, you know, in one of those masterminds where you're having a conversation and someone's saying dot, 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 and you're like, oh, yeah, like I've had that same thing too. Or uh, maybe a combination of both. Was it in, in a journaling time? Like what, where are you getting these like next yes, level mindset pieces. It's been a combination of just the experience of going to the past and, you know, getting my face, you know, knocked in a few times. Seriously. And then also masterminds and just mentoring as well. It's just, I think that's been the what worked probably been most for with masterminds and mentoring. It's not necessarily the, the person in front of the room. It's the people within the room that you get to yeah. build relationships with. And then this person has been there, done that. You now have a relationship with so when that time comes, you can then put a phone call and say, hey, this is where I'm at. Do you have any suggestion? But that phone call only was able to be received and communicated as you built a relationship. So like relationship capital is so critical. And so many times we overlook that. Yeah. One of my mentors, he mentioned that word multiple times, relationship capital. It's our network. It, it's so critical to our success. Yeah. And for you to be able to put yourself in a situation where you're not just meeting people but then creating the relationship so that they can 
not just even remember your name, but then like do deals together or create, you know, opportunities together. I'm going to just give myself a little bit of a tap here. At the very beginning, um, you said, dude, this, this entire podcast process that you put me through is like top notch. You're on with the notifications and this. And of course we send out something in the mail and it's like, you're going to remember gathering the Kings for sure. You know, and that's, I mean, I don't know. Who knows where this relationship is going to go? I'm excited to see. Maybe we do a deal together. Maybe there's a conference or maybe, shoot, maybe, maybe we do something together. I don't know. But the reality is, is that that would have never been possible if, if we didn't invest in relationship capital. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. So what process or discipline do you have now around making decisions in the business and life? You know, whatever you got for us, Jack. So it, it's been a bit of a transition. Like in the very beginning, the, the process for me was as a solopreneur, like everything was me, every decision was mine to make. Over the years for me, it's been a transition of mentoring my team members, hiring those right people, but then building up enough trust with those team members that they can start taking over those roles and responsibilities. And that was a very hard decision for myself and for everybody that has made that transition. That's been difficult as well. But if you really want to grow and have a business, that piece of it is so critical for that to occur. Otherwise, if you have to be the decision maker at every point, you have a very highly paid job that doesn't function without you being there. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't valuable and can't be sold. Exactly. And, you know, when, when you're able to do that as well, and you give up control and you give up some compensation, your time gets freed up for whatever your goals and your purposes are. Whether that's your, you know, obviously spending more time with family, but also being able to build other opportunities and other revenue streams. So, you know, sometimes we look at it as, as we're giving up a sacrifice, we're giving up control or revenue, but you're really robbing from yourself if you're not right. willing to make that transition. So good. We're going to have to quote that for sure. You're robbing yourself if you don't. Okay. I want to come at you at a couple different angles here with the speed round questions. The first one is this. If you had to take your business or businesses, different, you know, different angles of your business, I guess, dwindle it all down into one trackable metric, what is that metric that you would track for everyone? Oh my goodness. Like KPIs are so critical, but that one metric, that, that's a hard one. But I, I think just coming off the cuff on this one, I think it would be tracking the relationship capital and the conversations that are actually being built. And what I mean by that is, now, let me just use real estate, for example. But again, this applies to you know many other businesses, but you need people to help you with operations, management, leasing, construction, capital raising. And every one of those pieces is relationship capital, that one metric that's involved to bring all those together. Whether right. or not you're in a manufacturing business, whatever the case is, it's the people that allow the widgets to be built. So I would say that would probably be the answer for yeah, love it. Okay. What book would you recommend that a six figure business owner read? Six figure. So, going back to beginning, I can easily answer that. Rich Shack Poor Dad. And six figure, you know, I would say like Dave and Goggins, like Can't Hurt Me and like oh, Jocko books. Wilkins, like both of those guys, like the level that they're at, it, it's so, so amazingly and so powerful. I, I would say those would be two, two, oh, you said one, but I'd say two authors. That yeah. you would be doing yourself a disservice not to listen to. Yeah, of course. Jocko's incredible. I'm, I am curious on David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me. What's in your cookie jar? What do you, what do you, <laughs> what do you, what do you pull out in those moments? Oh, man. I think what I'll put in those moments would just be the persistence of not giving up. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's so many times that all of us have to encounter a situation that we don't have the answer, but there is a solution to every one of those problems and issues, regardless of how big it is. Yeah, and your willingness to press in and find it. Of course. Love that. Okay, I got a couple of operational questions here. How would you use your time if you were only given one hour each week to work on your business, okay. businesses? How would you use that one hour to successfully run your business like you do now? I think probably the most critical thing would be just scheduling that time so that time never gets over, overrun or overlooked. And just the preparation of making sure that it could just be my full focus for that period of time. For whatever. And then secondly, just probably identifying what task or would be most critical for the utilization of that one hour. You know, it's yeah. probably not going to be negotiating foreign pricing. It's probably going to be more of the bringing the operations of the team together and right. trying to understand, again, 
having them track their KPIs and being able to review in a brief moment, what are our KPIs for that business? Yeah, love it. You've already shared, you know, my normal question is, do you intentionally network or mastermind with other entrepreneurs? Obviously you do. A lot of, of your mindset has come from that. Would you, would you, I want to, I want to open up your perspective to like uh, the person that's listening right now. Maybe they've even heard me talk about this very thing on the show, or maybe they've been to a conference or wanted to go to a conference or wanted to join a group, whatever it was. And then they don't. Yeah. Procrastination, scarcity mindset around the money. You kind of related to that earlier. What would you say to that person right there that they, they it's just, the, just rip off the bandaid, dude, you know, like whatever that looks like for them. What would you say to that person? Exactly. You know, I think it'll just go back to like, look at your situation, where you're at and where you want to be and how long have you been not able to bridge that gap? Because so many times it comes down to two things, it's money and the time commitment, why people will be willing to afford. And sometimes it even gets a bit more challenging in there where they just don't believe they're capable of it, that they can't do that, they can't achieve that. And then that that also gets intermediate with it. But, you know, the one thing I think that really was really helpful with Rich at Porta was just looking at the mindset of like, in our educational system, we've been taught that when we make mistakes, mistakes are bad, we're punished for mistakes, we're yeah. disciplined for making mistakes. But the only way we can get ahead is our willingness to make mistakes alert from them. Every time I read money on a house or a project, there's not much I learn. Every time I lose money on a project, I learn an incredible amount of information. Yeah. So like the fear that stops us from moving forward, it's just, it's really unfortunate. Some of us are able to push forth in that faster than others, but it all comes out to, we just have to make a decision, just do it. Yeah, that's right. Good. Last question here for you, Jack. If you lost it all, what would you do? I would immediately go back to what's my network and building my network. I would say easy in that. And then as far as like tactically what I would do, you know, I think for each person that would have to look at it, like what, what are your, what is your main skill set? What is your gift that you could focus, whether that's sales, building a business, maybe et cetera. Yeah, I get it. But I think it comes down again to that network. That network is everything. That network is the opportunities, whether it's sales or networking, building, whatever the case is. It comes yeah. out to the network. What would you say? Because, I mean, obviously, the, if I had to theme or coin this show, it would be mindset as well as network. That, that those two things are obviously huge for you. Exude, just it just resonates right out of you. What would you say to the guy listening right now? He's hearing you and he's going, geez, I mean, I don't know if I've got a good network. Sure. You know, and like I'm outside of obviously, you know, coaching, mentor, we've nailed that one all the way down. What else can they do? You know, I really feel for that network, it's going to be a combination of paying up to get into the room with people. Because people that are successful, that are busy, it's pretty hard to pin those individuals down. Yeah. And if they're down, they're relaxing with their family. They generally are just in that mindset. They want to stay in that frame. And I think secondly, it's just having clarity as far as what do you want to pursue? Real estate, buying existing value at businesses. Right. E-commerce, crypto trading, like what is your niche that you want to do? And find out that the people that you want to replicate and try to do what you can to get within a circle. If that person doesn't have a mentoring or one-on-one or whatever the case is, do something out of the ordinary to get their attention. You know, I have sent many people, you know, sizable gift cards and gifts and thoughtful gifts, or I can go on Facebook. You know, I had a I had a, a loan broker that just absolutely crushed it for me. I had a deal that was gonna fall apart and he like pulled it through. He did the impossible. So I went on his Facebook page. I found out that you know he was into golfing. I bought a four hundred fifty dollars golf bag, and then got like three hundred three hundred dollars of golf balls and had them all personalized with like deal clothes or something. So like when nice. people deliver, or if you want to get into somebody's attention, yeah. find out what they're into. Do something thoughtful. Put some money into it and reach out and make yourself vulnerable. Yeah. And it's just that for me has paid off massive dividends by doing that. Yeah, hundred percent. I took an interview. I owned several businesses at the time, but I took an interview I'm at the 10X headquarters, Grant Cardone's office. And I was interviewed by a few people and I was offered two positions that I turned down. I still sent this ginormous edible arrangement basket. That was the businesses that I owned at the time. It was in a different city, so I still had to pay for it. It wasn't like it was free. But I specifically added bananas because the guy that I wanted to connect with liked chocolate dip bananas. That's awesome. And a year and a half later, he called me. Well, we had been talking, but he called me for an opportunity that was so unique that I moved my entire family across the country. 
I had seven businesses at that time. I had grown <laughs> seven businesses and I still moved my entire family across the country for an opportunity inside that organization for a short period of time. But the reality of it is, is that did it come down to the bananas? Probably not. But but my name, the opportunity, the encounter that we had was heightened and remembered. Yes. The freaking bananas. Exactly. And like, even when I was trying to get hired in the fire department, you know, I was thinking like, how do I set myself apart? So I, I'm being interviewed with 10 people that were all just the same face and same name at the end of the day. Yeah. So, you know, having like a colored copied resume. But secondly, when I left, I had a pre-addressed, you know, thank you note that it was handed to the secretary. So like I'm trying to hit them up a couple of times and just like, how do I stand out from everybody else? And oftentimes to stand out, it doesn't take much more than just a little bit of effort to stand yourself out from somebody else. That's right. That's right. You've been incredible. Jack, how can someone connect with you, find you? They want to know you. They want to do a deal with you. How can they find you? Yeah. So yeah, probably Facebook would be the easiest way yeah, just to reach out to me on there. You know, hit me up in Messenger and then we can connect and jump on a call. Like I said, the things that have going on right now is business-wise is we're, we do raise investor capital to invest into single family homes. Um, another investment opportunity that I've been involved in, I brought a lot of people in. I didn't do this until I had a, a lot of time, seven months and conviction and proof and concept, mm -hmm. but there, there's a Forex trading bot that I've been involved in. It's been, it's been making crazy returns. Well, the one thing that's been really helpful for me is like, as I started as a fireman, you know, we didn't make a lot of money, but I was able to put myself in a position where I was able to massively grow my net worth in a very short amount of time. Like for example, you know, I make more in washers and dryers right now from the quarters I collect on those apartments that I made as a fire. Right. So like, it's been really cool then to like be in a position where I was helping people out physically in the fire department, you know, and the squad and the fire truck sure. to help people out financially. So what that, what that spent is there's, you know, we've got about $12 million that we've raised on the apartments and the houses, and we're able to help people find a safe return. But then also with this other opportunity, it's been a way where people can take small investments and generate some pretty significant cash flow. So it's been a really good way of kind of again transitioning from physically helping people to financially helping people. And that's really has been my big transition. You know, it's finding the needs and be able to put people together and be able to provide cash flow for them. Because at the end of the day, you know, cash flow is what's needed to retire. And that was the piece that was so missing when I was at the fire department. Like you've got a pension and that sounds great, but you don't realize by the time you leave and healthcare gets kicked in, like that pension oh, is man. not able to cover you to get you to a point in life that you want to be at. And providing financial opportunities, investments, and cash flow is what allows people to have financial freedom. And I think that's the biggest thing about us owning businesses. It's the cash flow that it creates. It's not just the cash, but the cash provides the financial and the time freedom. Yeah. And we can't get our time back. You know, that's so the most critical thing for me personally. Yeah, no, I mean, it's huge. I, I so appreciate your willingness to talk about those things, even just the Forex information, you know, you just, it's stuff like that, crypto, that, that there's a lot of uncertainty. And so to know guys that are, you know, high profile guys making a lot of money in other areas. That's a, that's a great place to go. It makes me think of back in 2017 when I started investing in crypto, you know, my whole family was like, what are you doing? And for a while there, it looked like they were right, but we've, we've made some incredible returns there as well. And so no. the reality of it is, is I hope that the listeners paying attention, not only to your mindset and your relationship capital advice, but also that they would reach out and connect with you on those things and how to invest in lots of alternative ways. It sounds like. And on that subject, we mentioned 2017. That, let me just another point on that. When I was buying houses at $4,000 a house, my friends, my family, my coworkers thought I was crazy. Why would you touch real estate? But I'm like, I'm buying a house for $4,000. Like, how can you not see the opportunity? And in 2017, crypto was pretty ugly. And people again also had that opinion. And then the upside was massive. Well, the same thing right now. You know, the time to buy and to invest is when blood is in the streets. And that's where we're at right now. That's not to say every decision is right. But when I got invested into the crypto and Forex, I think I shortcut that process by hard to mentor. So it took me a lot longer to get up to speed than, than my real estate side. But, you know, on the Forex trading about it, when you're making 7% debt per month with that preservation of capital, like you can grow capital pretty quickly and also, full disclosure, I also got invested into a number of other things that were also scams. But in the process of losing money and yep. making mistakes, 
you really start to be able to see what a scam is, what isn't, and, and just sharpen your skills as an investor. So like for me personally, my wife and I have several other businesses. We got a, quite a few apartments. We're building homes. So we have other sources of cash flow so we can make other diversifications and investments, again, for the whole sole purpose of creating other flows of cash flow for us. Yeah, 100% cash flow is king, as they say. So I just so appreciate your time. You've been incredibly valuable here today, Jack. I can't wait to see where the conversation goes. We wish you nothing but success, blessing on your family, your businesses, all your businesses, your wife, the whole deal. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries and now interviewing literally over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings literally exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together one thousand kings specifically who are grateful but not done we're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business family and communities and here's what we believe that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy so if that relates and and resonates with you and you know that you need people around you sharp qualified other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.